Yo what is up guys welcome to a new video today I'm gonna do another dummies tutorial and this time it's gonna be about reverb. Reverb is something natural in our environment we have reverb in our room we have reverb in the street in the mountain the difference is how much reverb we have and how big is this one to check the reverb what we can do is just clap when we clap on our room we're gonna hear the reverb but of course if we go to a professional studio with a lot of acoustic treatment you're not gonna have any reverb basically and well why do we want reverb in our songs we want reverb for different reasons the first one would be that it makes it sound more natural as i said it's something natural in the world so it makes your track sound as more pleasing you know because if you don't have reverb it's gonna sound a bit weird the second thing would be to place the sounds in the in the song this way you have sounds in the background you have sounds more in the front the third thing would be to make the sound sound bigger for example the leads the vocals we add reverb it sounds a lot 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 bigger and the fourth thing would be to just create some effects you know for example when we add in a step and we add a lot of reverb to create more tail or to create reverse uh, effects or things like that so well today I'm gonna show you the basics of reverb this way you can understand how this works and just start touching your reverb plugins of course every single plugin has different things but all of them have the basic things and before going to the video i want to say that if you have any more ideas for dummies tutorial just leave it down in the comments and if this video helped you just remember to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss more tutorials and with all of that being said let's start with it so here i loaded different plugins from different brands for example i have vintage verb the ars acoustic this one is the fruity river by FO Studio and the Fab Filter Pro R. As you can see, all of them are different, but all of them have the main basic things. The first thing we, we need in a reverb is of course the mix knob as a lot of plugins. We need this because if we don't have the mix knob it's gonna have sound with all the reverb and we don't want that. We want to be able to use more or less reverb in our song. As you can see for example here we have the mix knob. Here is divided in dry and wet. Uh, also here there's a ghost we have dry and wet and here we have a mix uh, knob. Then we have the pre-delay. What is this? The pre-delay is how much it's gonna take to start adding reverb when with it we play the sound so if we have less uh, pre-delay we're gonna have reverb just at the same time as the dry sound and if we have a uh, long pre-delay first we're gonna have the dry sound and then the reverb we also have it here we have it here just uh, here just say delay but if you look up here you can see that says pre-delay and then here the pre-delay would be the distance then we have the decay and it's how long is gonna be this reverb so when it starts sounding you know when we start with the reverb how long is it gonna take to just fade out as you can see pre-delay and decay would be more or less like the attack and the release on a compressor as I show you in another dummies tutorial and well the decay here is this knob here is this knob here is this knob called space and here is this knob and then finally the size this is super important because because it says how big is your room. To show you this, I'm gonna use the fruit river because you have here the, the room and you can see it better. So if you move the size, we have a smaller room and this we have a bigger room. So we're gonna have different reverbs. Here I have this uh, just a snare sound and I'm gonna use now the fruit river so you can see the difference in the size. So this is with the biggest size and this is with the smallest size. As you can see, it sounds pretty different. And well, then we have in every uh, plugin, we have different settings, different things that we can use to create the river we want. For example, here we have damping, modulation, uh, diffusion, EQ to, to EQ the reverb. For example, here in the Fab Filter Pro Q3, we have an, a better EQ, in my opinion. You can just use this as the normal EQ by, by Fab Filter. Then in this one to create the room, we have the room size and the room width, so it's not just uh, a, a one knob, you know. Then here we have a tag that also helps to change the character of the of the reverb. Also here we have this character and these brightness knobs, you know. Each plugin has different things. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna use this one because it's the, the one I use the most. And well, um, as I said, here I have this snare, so I'm just gonna start playing it and show you what it does. So I'm just gonna put um, the mix on 30% for example and I'm gonna put a short decay and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start increasing the decay so you can hear uh, the difference this is a super short reverb and this is a super long reverb And well, how long do we want our reverb? So it depends on every sound, every song. For example, in Hardstyle we have really huge reverbs with 
pretty long decays and for example in pop or progressive house maybe we, we have a shorter reverse but of course it depends on what you want to achieve. On percussions I recommend you to go maybe from 0.5 seconds to 1.5 more or less because we want a short reverb on percussions. Maybe a bit less. Something like this. If we talk about the pre-delay I'm just gonna increase it a lot so you can hear what it does. So as you can see it takes 248 milliseconds before starting to sound and we create like this kind of delay. And where do we want to have our pre-delay? I like to use this website, I just put delay calculator on Google and here you can put your BPM. So for example if we put 128 for progressive house, here it says how long should be our pre-delay. So the best way to, to go with the beat, to go with the tempo would be to use these settings, these values. Okay, so normally I like to use 29.3 but of course don't care too much about this just listen and and, and choose the, the value that you want you know but yeah for example let's gonna say I put it on 29.3 so it's not too late but it's not too fast then I'm gonna use the size in this case I don't want that huge size because I want the river to be present in this snare so I'm gonna make it uh, smaller but not zero because uh, I don't like this kind of reverbs. So maybe 50%. Because this way we can hear so good the reverb and it's not an effect like this. You know, um, this, this way with 50% the reverb is more present. After that, what I would do, and in this case with Valhalla Vintage, would be try other modes like bright hole, uh, maybe dirty plate or smooth plate, maybe change the color because, um, for example, the 70s has a high cut on 10k and the 80s doesn't have it. Uh, maybe try to EQ it, you know, so this way it's a bit cleaner. Not that much, of course. But the basic things would be this three and the size. So as I said, it depends on every sound, the, the settings that you have. But I'm gonna tell you the ones I normally use for my percussions, for my leads, for my chords, for the vocals and so on. Normally on percussions, as I show you, I use settings more or less like this, you know, a small size, a short decay. But when we talk about leads or chords, I like to have a bigger decay, like three, 3.5 maybe, or a bit less, 2.5, you know. So between 2.5 and 3.5 would be okay. More or less the same pre-delay, maybe a bit more low cut and a bit m less high cut because this way, the less highs you have, the longer is, is gonna seem that the, the sound is. So it's gonna have a cleaner and better reverb, in my opinion. And the mix will be also about 30%. Of course, this depends on a lot of things. On hard step, maybe I go to 40 or 50, depends on what you wanna achieve. You wanna uh, lead with a lot more reverb, just increase it, you know, and maybe add more decay. For acoustic sounds, for the breakdown like pads, pianos, I would go for four, maybe five, but not a lot more, because when you have too much decay, everything is gonna start clashing because you're gonna have the decay of the first note and then clashing with the decay of the second note and you don't want to have this. And on vocals, depends on the vocal and again what they want to achieve but yeah it would go around four or five like in the breakdown sounds because this way you have a really huge vocal with a lot of reverb and every time that it stops you know, like it is singing, but it has some silence. You're gonna have the, that reverb that is gonna cover the, the space. So, well, guys, these are my tips for reverb. As you could see, there are a lot of different plugins with a lot of different things, a lot of different settings, but the more important ones are pretty easy. Just mix, pre-delay, decay, and size. And what I recommend you to do is go right now to your DAW. It doesn't need to be FO Studio. Just go there and try it. Try it with percussions, try it with leads, try it with chords, try it with, um, vocals with pads with uh, symbols with crashes whatever you know just just try it and try the different settings what i recommend you to do is go with the most extreme settings you know so increase the mix a lot maybe 70 percent or even 100 percent so this way you're gonna see what is actually doing you know what, what the river is doing to the sound how is it gonna sound the, this river so well guys hope this tutorial helped you i try to explain everything as easy as possible as i said before if you have more suggestions about dummy tutorial just leave it down below in the comments and I would do the ones I think are useful. Don't forget to leave a like if this video helped you, subscribe so you don't miss anything and 
I recommend you to subscribe because there are a lot, lot, lot good things coming soon. And guys, see you in the next video.